We understand that the problems are multidisciplinary, that the challenges are large, and the university has always been concerned with how it can take the work it does across many disciplines to deal with big global questions and challenges. I'm Professor Margaret Gardner. I'm the President and Vice-Chancellor of Monash University. We understand that we live in a diverse community, but that diverse community works together. So we hope that we have a series of values that give people the ambition, but the openness to challenge, uh, that we encourage them to be prepared to stand up for change where they think it's needed. I'm Rebecca Brown. I'm the Director of Monash Sustainable Development Institute at Monash University. What we try to do is make some big inroads into impact. We work with policy makers, we work with businesses, we work with practitioners. So we are like a gateway and a bridge between research and education and practice. We have researchers across everything from ecology through to epidemiology, social sciences, and we operate in India and China and Malaysia. There are a huge number of areas where we are either intimately involved in advancing knowledge in that field and changing practice. The university itself is committed, not just in its education and research to do that, but will have an engagement with a community or a partnership or a project that is also working towards uh, implementing those goals. My name is Nikki Chudley and I work with Climate Works Australia, which is part of the Monash Sustainable Development Institute. And within MSDI, Climate Works' focus is on sustainable development goal number 13, which is climate action. More recently, we've committed to the much more ambitious net carbon emissions, we are turning ourselves in part into our own research environment where we can test how things work. The Monash Net Zero initiative actually commits the university to transition to net zero emissions for all of its Australian campuses by the year 2030, so that's really ambitious. A four pillars approach to decarbonisation for Monash includes undertaking ambitious energy efficiency, electrifying campuses by switching from gas to electricity, installing on-site renewable electricity generation, and then entering into power purchase agreements to produce an energy supply that is driven by wind and solar only. When we do these things, we are testing all those things about organisational change and what it means because most research organisations like us are very energy hungry. And in that way, we hope also testing ways that we might influence the way things happen around us in our immediate communities because we have an obligation to contribute to the change. Monash Sustainable Development Institute, we're a research and uh, education centre at Monash University. Why we're a little bit unique is that we're a university-wide institute. So what that means is we engage across the 10 faculties uh, at Monash and our job is to really bring together different disciplinary insights and expertise to tackle global sustainable development challenges. RISE is focused on this global phenomena of over a billion people on the planet that live in these informal settlements that don't have fair or adequate or reliable access to water supply, to sanitation or flood protection. So a challenge such as a lack of water servicing in informal settlements is what we would call a grand sustainable development challenge, particularly given in the next 50 years we'll have three and a half billion people living in these conditions. So the numbers are staggering and uh, things are getting worse, not better. My name is Diego Ramirez Lovering and I'm a professor of architecture um, at Monash University in the Faculty of Art, Design and Architecture. So the RISE project is looking at providing a new type of infrastructure, what we call green technology or green infrastructure, which are nature-based systems to complement traditional centralized systems.
And they're very, very actually simple systems based on sand and gravel media, as well as plants to clean the water. So they're nature-based systems. We are working with communities for them to build these systems themselves. So therefore they understand how they're constructed, how they operate, therefore able to operate and maintain them. And we're testing all the children under the age of five, their gastrointestinal health for the five years continuously. And we're testing the water quality and the environmental quality more generally across the five years. And so the question we're going to be able to answer is does sustainable green water infrastructure actually net improve the environment and improve people's health? And if it does and meets the water needs of these communities, this could be a massive solution for a very large portion of the planet's population. We know that many of the issues that confront us in the world, particularly the big global challenges, don't turn up in neat little disciplinary boxes. And so every university deals with the trade-off between that deep expertise and excellence and what that does to getting people to talk to one another about a problem for a solution. But there's this big student body who themselves are committed to making change so that the world is better, so that we are able to mitigate the effects of climate change, so that we are able to improve the human condition. One of the things that I keep in my mind is one of our students, he's now a graduate, actually was the catalyst for the youth group supporting sustainable development goals. My name is Sam Loney and I work with the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network and I am a Monash alumni. And I founded a program called SDSN Youth and recently I've moved to New York to help scale and expand that program but also working on the financing of sustainable development goals. In 2012, the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon had started a new initiative called the SDSN. And the idea was to mobilize global expertise around the design and implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. They're incredibly ambitious. They look at a long-term intergenerational effort to transform society. They're not looking at band-aid solutions. They're looking at transforming the systems and the way we think and the way we do things. You have got a huge generation of people who are very well placed in terms of their numbers, their creativity, and their idealism to be able to achieve the sustainable development goals. Are we going to be handing off a planet to future generations that is going to be livable, that's going to be prosperous, that's going to be safe? I think that's the kind of question that world leaders and everyone should grapple with. That's the kind of question that I want, I grapple with every day but I will fight every day to make sure they are.